This is Arnie, and this is our second attempt at the roadmap to success. Um, from talking with the Guardians, I think the big problem that Arnie has is he didn't have a lot of rules and structure, and so his, he got confused in thinking he was in a leadership position. And he's decided to make himself the bouncer. And so if there's any sounds outside the apartment, he barks to let them know that he doesn't appreciate what they're doing. Now, we're gonna, accomplish, we're gonna change that by changing his perception of authority into more of a follower. And we're gonna do this by incorporating rules and boundaries. One of the rules would be no furniture for 30 days or as long as the problems are abating, or until the problems abate. And then uh, at that point, furniture only with permission and only for good behavior. So if he's on the furniture and he starts growling or barking, he immediately has to get down. We're gonna incorporate a dog bed and uh, we're gonna condition him to use the dog bed by tossing a treat onto the dog bed. When he touches it with his lips, we're gonna say the word school. Now first we toss the treat and let him see us toss and do several of them in a row. Then we're gonna start leaving one on the dog bed and just monitoring him. When he gets it, then we're gonna say the word school. And the third way is I can bring him over there and put him in a sit or LAY and pop the treat in his mouth and say school. At first it's to entice him to go there, but after a while he's gonna start going on his own. When he does, then we wanna get up and either go give him a treat or just say the word school every time he lays down there on his own. Another rule is we're gonna make him sit before we let him in or out of the, the door to the deck. Now, uh, if I go to the door and say sit once and he doesn't sit within a couple seconds, I walk away. After a, couple, after a minute, I come back and give him another opportunity to comply the first time. If he doesn't, then I walk away for two minutes, next time four minutes, next time for eight minutes. So he has to comply right away or he has to wait twice as long before he gets another opportunity. Uh, once he can get to the point where he will sit right away, the next step is to put him into a sit and then open the door a little bit and then close it. A little bit more, close, open and close it until he understands that just because the door opens doesn't mean he has permission. He has to wait for someone to give him permission. Now to teach him to go outside, I would, when he is, it's time, I would toss a treat outside, don't toss it over the deck. And uh, as soon as he goes out there, we're gonna say the word Virginia, or whatever word that means to go outside. Um, let me see, uh, when the human's are eating, he should not be within seven feet of the humans, and the human should eat first. Now, if you guys are gonna eat at a different time than you're feeding him, all we have to do is get a chip or a cracker or a piece of celery, eat it in five or more bites, then give him permission to eat. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, we're, gonna use, uh, we're gonna start petting him with a purpose. So when he jumps up on us or nudges us, we're gonna not gonna pet him. Instead, we're gonna give him a counter order to sit or lie down. As soon as he sits, we pet him under his chin, and we say the word sit only, not good dog. Uh, we're gonna use passive training to, uh, get him, to teach him to lay down. So every time he lays down on his own, we're gonna reach over and pet him, and we're gonna say the word chill. Every time he comes to us, we're gonna pet him and say the word come. The guardian should actually sit down and write up a list of all the command words, and make sure they're saying the command words specific to that task, not come here, come, over here, here boy, we're just gonna say come or here or whatever the word is. There's no right or wrong word. Just make sure you're saying it the same word in the same way. If I say come and he, and I, he comes to me, I pet him and say come, that's a completely different sound. So make sure we're saying it the same way. When I give a command, I tell the dog to sit when he, and I say sit when he sits, I pet him under his chin and say the word sit. Not good sit, not good dog, like we talked about. Good dog means everything, so we're gonna just use just the command word. Let me see, uh, we're gonna use counter conditioning to address his issue of wanting to bark at things that he doesn't understand or that he's trying to alert to. So we're gonna do that by having somebody go outside in the hallway and we're gonna be on our phones with them and we're gonna say cheese or whatever the word is and every time that person outside hears it, they're gonna start knocking. Now before we do that, we're gonna make sure that he is chewing on the treat first before the knocking starts and then before the, no before the treat goes away, the knocking stops. So the only time he hears the knock is when he's having a positive uh, reinforcer delivered. When there are problems or things that he, uh, activities that he doesn't know how to behave, we're gonna break them down into individual steps, help him practice each step by itself without all the rest of them. And once he, we can use positive reinforcers and uh, petting, treats, whatever it is. Once he understands what to do, then we're gonna go to the next step and then the next step. And once he can successfully do each individual step, then we start stringing them together. This way we can teach him the behavior that we want using positive reinforcement rather than getting frustrated with him because he's not reading our minds. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Um, uh, I'm trying to think. We're going to use the escalating consequences to disagree. First thing we're going to do is hiss one time only. And we're going to max the intensity of our hiss with the dog's energy. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to stand up abruptly and turn to face him. Remember, your authority goes whichever direction your hips are pointing at and we're gonna keep pivoting until he's stationary. As soon as he's stationary, we're gonna take a step backwards or sit down, preferably step backwards. Uh, the third consequence is we're gonna stand up or, or we're standing, we're gonna march directly at him with steam 
and we're gonna keep marching at him until he turns sideways or greater to us. As soon as he does, we freeze in place, make sure our feet are together, and then we go down to the second consequence when we pivot our hips to follow him until he's stationary, then we take a step backwards or we sit down. By consistently following these escalating consequences, eventually, at first you'll have to do hiss, then you'll have to stand up, then you'll have to march, and then eventually it'll just be just a hiss. But always, always, always start with your hiss, and don't hiss too many times. Uh, let me see, uh, the counter conditioning should help, the rules and boundaries should help him feel less of a need to do that. Um, helping delay gratification, make him sit, make him wait for his food. Sit and wait. When you guys go out the door for a walk, he should follow you. Whoever goes in the front is the leadership position to a dog. Um, let me see, if there's activities he gets really excited about, we wanna practice that activity over and over again. Like if he gets excited for le being leashed up, just walking to where the leash is. As soon as he gets excited, we stop, we go sit down, and we wait for him to settle. Then we get back up and repeat the process. Each time we should get a little bit further, a little bit further, and eventually we can go through the whole process and he stays completely calm. Remember, calm or excited is not necessarily happy when it comes to dogs. They can be excited and happy, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind. We also don't want to pet him anytime that he's nervous, anxious, frustrated, angry, any unbalanced state of mind, because whenever we pet a dog, whatever the dog happens to be doing at the time is what we're reinforcing. Yes, I'm telling him. Uh, let me see what else. Um, we're all, we're going to go to the dog park right now. We're going to see how he does at the dog park. He doesn't get a lot of exposure to around other dogs, so the guardians don't know how he's going to act. So I'm going to kind of supervise. We're going to go to uh, Jocelyn Park over by my house in Santa Monica. Um, it, the more inter social interaction he gets, he, it's social problem solving. and also gets him a chance to release some of his energy with other dogs his size and age. Jocelyn Dog Park has uh, a nice little section on the side, so it's just for small dogs. Um, so basically, that's kind of uh, our roadmap to success here uh, for Arnie. Now, if you have questions, you don't know how to do some of these techniques, uh, go to doggoneproblems.com and the dog training tips link or section, you press that button on the right side of the page, um, this side of the page for you, this side for me, there'll be a search box. You can type in counter conditioning, all one word, and I'll have a number of videos that go through that. Escalating consequences, another something I have videos for, petting with a purpose or passive training. Uh, and you can watch videos with other clients where I've discussed these things in a little bit of greater detail. Well, uh, we're getting ready to go to the dog park, buddy. You ready? Remember, mm -hmm. everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.